Hey everyone, I'm Mohammed, and this is the morning of August 19th, 2021. Laravel 8.55.0 was released yesterday and today I'm gonna bring you the awesome things the Laravel team and community have been working on lately. So without much ado, let's set off. We'll start with added support to GCM encryption. Laravel ships with an encryption component that allows you to encode a string to a ciphertext. This ciphertext can only be decoded by your application, which allows us to store and exchange data securely. Previously, Laravel only supported the AES-256 and AES-128 CPC cipher only. Starting this release, you can use the AES-128 and 256 GCM encryption. And you do that inside the config app.php configuration file. GCM allows for more secure encryption and better performance. And remember, if you wish to switch to the new GCM encryption in an existing app, you will need to decrypt all existing encrypted data that are stored in your databases or cache. You need to decrypt it first using the old cipher and then re-encrypt it using the new cipher. I'm not saying that you should do that, that you should switch to GCM encryption. I just wanted to remind you that you should decrypt and re-encrypt if you want to make the switch. Next, we have a quality of life improvement to the framework straight limiter. We have added a new attempt method that allows you to execute a callback if the rate limiter allows it, depending on the number of attempts that you allow and the k seconds. And to show you that, we will use the rate limiter facade and call the attempt method. For the first argument, we are going to specify the limiter key. In our case, we are going to call it hats. And then for the second argument, we will set the allowed number of hats. For the third argument, we are going to pass the callback that should be executed. And for the fourth argument, we are going to specify the number of seconds before the limiter resets. So let's set it to 60. So our limiter here will allow three executions of our callback here every 60 seconds. The fourth argument here is completely optional. You can choose not to set it and Laravel will use 60 by default. And this new addition allows us to implement a rate limiter in our application easily by calling a single method. Isn't that handy? Next, we will look into a new addition to the route model binding feature of the framework. And route model binding provides a convenient way to automatically inject model instances based on routes that you specify. Behind the scenes, Laravel will query the database and bring the model instance that matches the model key that you provide to the route. Typically, the route model binding feature will not query or will not retrieve soft deleted models. But in the latest release of Laravel, we added a way to allow you to instruct Laravel to retrieve or to also query soft deleted models when using the route model binding feature. Let me show you. If we hit this route here and provide an ID of a soft deleted model, Laravel will respond with 404 because by default, it will only query existing models and not soft deleted models. However, if we use the new with trash method here, with charged, this behavior will change. Laravel will query soft deleted models alongside existing models. And this can come in handy if you want to show some content to the user if they try to interact with a soft deleted model instead of just showing 404 not found. This release also comes with very cool additions to the validation component. First, we have a new without trashed method added to the exists validation rule and we have a way to conditionally add validation rules to a specific attribute and finally we have a way to extract validation or validated data from a validator instance let me show you each of these features first the new without trashed method will allow us to validate a certain value exists within records that aren't soft deleted here, the validator will allow an email address that exists in the user's table only within records that are not soft deleted. The same without trashed method also exists for the unique validation rule as well, by the way. So that's the first feature, a new without trashed method added to the exists validation rule. Let's remove this rule here and add a new one. We'll add a seats attribute and this seats has 
two validation rules first it must be an integer and second the maximum is 100 and finally we will dump the validated data by calling validator validate if we go to our http client and send a request with seats equal 12 the validation will pass but if we provide 122 the validation will fail because the maximum was set to only 100 now what if we only want to limit the seats to 100 if the current user is on the base plan? In other words, we only want to apply the maximum 100 rule when the current user is on the base plan. For that, we are going to add the new rule when method. So we will remove this validation rule here and call rule when. The first argument to the when method is a condition that decides if the rules should be applied or not. It can be a boolean or a closure. So in our case here, let's just pass true. And then for the second argument, we can pass a validation rule or a set of validation rules. In our case, we only want to apply the max 100 rule conditionally. Now let's go to the HTTP client and send another request. And the validation fails because we have true passed here. If we set it to false and then send the request again, we can see that the max 100 rule was not applied and the validation passes. This is quite handy indeed. It will make our complex validation rules much cleaner. Perfect. Now let's move to the final addition to the validation component in this release. We know that the validate method here runs the validation and returns the validated data. In this latest release, we have added a new safe method. This method returns an instance of validated input. Let's check this instance, validated input. This object has methods to conveniently return a subset of the validated data, like we have an only method and an accept method. There is also a collect method that allows us to return a validated data as a collection. Also, there is an all method and two array methods to return the validated data as an array. This can be useful if you are dealing with a large input data and you want to extract subsets of this data in different parts of your application. We are also going to use this in Laravel 9 to skip mass assignment protection if the data passed to the model is an instance of the validated input object. All these new additions are in preparation to Laracon Online on September 1st. Taylor Otwell has decided to make a quality of life improvement to the framework every day leading to the conference. So if you have any ideas, if you have anything that's bothering you with the framework, now is a great time to share your ideas with Taylor Otwell on Twitter and see them implemented. Also make sure to check laracon.net and grab your ticket for the biggest Laravel conference ever. It has a lot of talks covering everything about Laravel and web development in general. And this concludes our episode here. That's everything I have to share with you. I hope you learned something. Have a good day. Enjoy coding and see you soon.